So Elon Musk says that XAI is targeting 50 million H100 equivalent GPUs in the next five years. Now they're gonna have to buy entire power plants just to be able to fuel this monster, and yet they're still desperately trying to hire Android developers at almost half a million dollars a year. Now I want you to think about this for a second. A million H100s, that's what they're trying to go for. They're trying to target as many H100 GPUs as they can. That's more computing power than the entire countries have. And they can't find enough developers to basically build basic mobile apps. So imagine pouring endless resources into a machine that promises the world only to hit a wall of diminishing returns. So after watching this industry for a while, I can tell you that this exposes the biggest lie in AI right now. More hardware doesn't equal better intelligence. It just means more expensive problems. So I'm noticing a pattern with XAI's massive GPU push that echoes past bubbles. Where the real break, where is the real breakthrough hiding, right? Are we betting on raw power to solve problems that need smarter designs instead? Let's dig into why scaling to a million GPUs might not be the golden ticket that everybody thinks it is. Let's dive into this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With over a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so Elon's throwing nuclear reactor levels of power at AI training, but he's still tweeting that he needs more developers. So the XAI frenzy with their million GPU ambition is raising eyebrows, and it's time that we really question if brute force is the answer. So just like I spotted with the Web3 bubble, before it popped. I see parallels here that demand a closer look. Let's break down the 12 key insights into this wild experiment and what it means for developers like you. So today I'm going to break down the reasons why XAI's brute force scaling approach reveals the fundamental problems with how the industry thinks about its AI progress. So let's jump, jump over here into some of the comments as well as a um, couple of articles that we have to look at here. So this was a comment for one of my users, and I really liked this comment because I, I think it really highlights a lot of this. He said, we need way more of this information out there. Strapping a million GPUs together is tough. Granting more processing power, it's still restricted by its own parameters and must function within them. Tape a, uh, taping a million toothpicks together, you still have not a ladder to... You still have not a ladder to the moon, but one million by one is still, hmm, still one, right? I think what you've said regarding the parameters and, and what's looked like corruption is current report uh, issue in Chinese biometrics now uh, combined with personal biometrics are unable to uh, process the faces of humans in CCTV pattern recognition. A hack, malware, virus corruptions, though it used to process humans' faces and no longer does, and the Chinese don't even know why. See, they're starting to see hitting the point of diminishing returns turns on a lot of this stuff. And that's what we're going to see over coming time. And that's what this article here is talking about. Elon Musk says XAI is targeting five, 50 million H100 equivalent AI GPUs in five years. 230,000 GPUs, including 30,000 GB200s already reportedly operational uh, for training Grok. So, but then he also needs a nuclear power plant to build a power, right? Now, it's saying that this is 50 exaflops for XAI training. He says the goal, quote, the XAI goal is 50 million in units of H100 equivalent AI compute, but not, but much better power efficiency online within five years. Now, again, but with better power efficiency, like that's just kind of a little bit more than a side note here, right? Because one NVIDIA H100 GPU can deliver around a thousand FP16s or BF16 T flops for AI training, right? And those are different measurements that they use for the training. Um, but he just wants to continue to go more and more and more. Now, Google, of course, jumps into the fray and they're saying right now they have approximately a million H100 equivalent. Uh, and so these, they don't use, because Google uses a lot of their own technology technology here, right? So an equivalent to an H100, they're saying they're using um, about a million Ironwood V7 TPUs and 500,000 H100 GPUs online. So they have about 1.5 million. So with 400 to 600,000 NVIDIA Blackwell uh, GPUs incoming, so that's going to be another half a million approximately, right, of the GB200s. Now, so total compute capacity is about 200 million H100 equivalents by the end of the year. This is this arms race that I'm talking about here for where they're trying to get as much hardware as fast as they can. They'll spend approximately $85 billion in 2020. But the thing that nobody's really talking about is this is just to acquire the hardware. This isn't to support them, to maintain them, to the electricity form. This is going to be more power than most cities drain. And that's where I think what we've done is people are just losing 
in their mind over uh, AI right now. And I understand that some parts of it are impressive, right? But right now, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a quickly divide huge divide where we're seeing this them chasing these wild dreams right and they're trying to harness all this gpu power but drawing from my years of experience in tech teams i've seen this kind of scale before more hardware doesn't always mean more smarts Elon's X post hints that they're already trying to roll along with 200,000 GPUs. So the idea is to crunch data harder. So one of the things that noted that I noticed on the launch of Grok 4 was they said that they had 100x the amount of training power. And yet they were even saying that they got 10x results. Now, if I have to put in 100x of something and I only get 10x on the output, to me, that seems unbalanced and it already seems like we're at a point of diminishing return. But arguably, the more I've used Grok 4 and the more others have used Grok 4, what we're really seeing is actually just a small fraction percentage. I don't think Grok 3 to 4 is 10 times better. And even their own benchmarking doesn't say that it's 10 times better. So while building the GPU Fortress, XAI and these others posted, uh, sorry, XAI specifically posted jobs listing for Android engineers that they're willing to pay up to $440,000 per year for Android developers. Now, according to their post, they said they still can't find good devs despite the massive salaries. So the comments reveal the real problem. Experienced developers are getting zero responses to application and the talent gap isn't about money. It's about companies not knowing how to identify and hire real engineering talent. But the big question I would ask here is if you have that much computing processing power and you're still trying to hire Android developers, isn't this supposed to be beating out like developers, right? That's the hype. That's what the hype has been saying is that all this is going to beat that beat developers. If you have 230,000 GPUs and you still can't figure out how to replace an Android developer, yeah, but we're right near AGI, right? Like, and that's what I keep hearing over and over again. Oh, you developers are going to be out of a job, right? But I keep hearing this over and over again. So developers, your skills are your secret sauce here. Keep leveling up. Keep investing in yourself. Keep learning. Learn how to use AI. I'm not saying we should not use AI. It makes us make this very clear. We should be using AI to build more powerful things. And those who know how to use it are going to be able to demand even higher salaries. But the new there's new research showing that LLM scaling laws have hit their limit and their ability to prove. Now, everybody who tells me, but we're seeing these exponential growth and all of this. Yeah, that's great. But like, let's dive into this report here and I can show you. So let's look over this report here a bit, but then I'm going to break it down here for you. So he says, uh, and I'll blow this up just a little bit here. It says, we, we show that the scaling laws which determine the performance of large language models severely limit their ability to improve the uncertainty of their predictions. As a result, ra raising their reliability to meet the standards of scientific inquiry is intricately but not but by any reasonable measure. We argue the very mechanism which fuels much of the learning power of LLMs, namely the ability to generate non-Gaussian output distributions from Gaussian input ones, might well be at the roots of their propensity to produce error pileups, ensuing information catastrophes and degenerative AI behavior. So they go on to talk about that really they're saying that they've really hit uh, the wall on this, right? In the last decade, uh, AI and most notably machine learning have taken science and, so and society by a storm. There's no, 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 uh, no question here, right? But they go on to explain that albeit elementary in many uh, respects, the consequence of the very low scaling components do not appear to have been explicitly spelled out in the scientific literature. Da, 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 they go through here. Okay. Sorry, this is the part I was looking for. Computer simulation is an essential component of scientific. Uh, all right. That's not the part I was looking for. Anyway, let's jump back to my notes here because I, I didn't highlight this up and next time I'll try to highlight everything up for you guys here. So the paper wall confronting large language models, right, reveals something shocking about dimension diminishing returns. Researchers found that error reduction follows a power law with exponential 0 0.01, meaning you need 10 billion extra parameters to cut errors by 10x. So for compute, it's even worse. The exponential is 0 0.05, requiring 10 to the 20th power additional joules for each 10x accuracy improvements. So the translation here is we're hitting a mathematical wall where more hardware produces exponentially smaller gains. Yet companies keep throwing money at the problem 
problem, like physics doesn't apply to him. Now, the irony is that when Musk announced X uh, Grok 4 um, on his most recent, he said that they were working to try to get it to solve physics problems for him. Apparently, they haven't really solved those physics problems yet because they might have actually seen some of this if they had it solve some of these physics problems for him. But we're hitting this wall where more hardware does not produce smaller gains. Now, let's jump back into this a little bit here because if 0 0.05, an exponent, uh, so the exponent is 0 0.05 requiring 10 to the 20th additional joules for 10x accuracy. So by them throwing more and more hardware on it, they know that in order to get more accuracy, they're going to have to throw 10 to the 20th times more just to get 10 times more accuracy. Now, XAI bought an entire overseas power plant and is shipping it to the US. So think about that for a minute. We're talking about two gigawatts of power consumption, and this is enough to power 1.9 million homes. That's more electricity than most small country, uh, countries use to train just to train these chatbots. So now again, what's, you know, XAI makes some really interesting characters though, right? So that's what's really this worth, right? But they're literally poisoning the air in Memphis while burning through more energy than nuclear reactors. The carbon footprint of training one advanced model now equals thousands of cars running for years. Now, if you have systems that aren't connected and you need help, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting systems so they can, so your company can work to maximum efficiency. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, research shows that LLMs generate non-Gaussian output distributions from Gaussian inputs, creating error pileups, right? This leads to what scientists call information catastrophes or de uh, degenerative AI behavior. So basically, the more these models learn, the more they compound their own mistakes. So add synthetic training data to the mix and fake correct correlations start overwhelming real signals. Now here's the kicker. While XAI builds the world's largest supercomputer, their Android apps lag behind iOS because they need developers, right? Now, the interesting thing about this is we continue to see diminishing returns on this over years. You're gonna see more and more problems like this. So just just throwing more hardware at it is not going to continue to solve the problem. And this is where I think we've reached the point uh, of diminishing return, where you see people starting to, or these companies are starting to really hit the wall on what they can produce with the systems that they have. But this has caused a GPU arms race because they have to continue to throw more and more hardware at it just to be able to be incrementally better. So when everyone has access to similar compute models, nobody has a competitive advantage. OpenAI, Google, X, Anthropic, Topic, they're all converging on the same performance levels using the same approaches. The real differentiation comes from engineering implementations, user experience, and business model innovation. Companies throwing billions at compute are essentially buying themselves into obsolescence. The winners will be those that focus on practical applications rather than benchmark bragging rights. Now, here's where I think the industry should go. If you want my take, and I think you're here, so you must be wanting to hear what I'm saying about it, but my opinion is, I think they should be working on optimizing small models that are very specific for specific use cases. Hey, you want to generate an image? Great. Go to this model and it can be optimized to that specifics, right? You want to go into a medical field. Okay, well, then there's going to be a set of models that are specific to that. Right now, they're trying to boil the ocean by doing everything for everything, everything for everybody, right? And I think this is causing them to go so large that they can't niche down to one specific thing and get really good at one thing. And I think that's where we're going to see the model go. I'm doing some other analysis around some of the finances this week that are going into the AI, uh, into this crazy AI fad. And we're going to see a bubble burst. And I'll explain what that means here. It doesn't mean that AI is going away. But what I predict is going to happen is we're going to continue to see companies niche down into very specialized components where they can take smaller models that aren't as expensive to run and niche them down into spe specific use cases. We're already doing this with a lot of our clients, right? I take open source models, we build independent servers that are run on their premises, not expensive cloud servers that are going to take, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month to run, but just another machine that's pretty high powered, but sits, can sit in their own uh, hosting center and then run for their specific use case. We're not building chatbots. We're using AI to match data, to do pattern matching, to solve independent problems. We're using it for all of these little specific use cases that we can then train the model to get really good at. And that's where we're specialized. 
socializing. So rather, so to me, this is this $20 billion lesson of trying to throw hardware at this, where instead we can just use some basic engineering principles, take the strength of these LLMs that are very impressive at what they do, plug them into very specific use cases, and build out to something very specific to solve a real problem. So the dirty secret of AI scaling is we are hitting a wall faster than people are expecting. High quality training data is becoming more scarce and synthetic data creates its own problems. This is why companies are shifting um, from focusing on training compute to inference optimization and human feedback. The next breakthroughs will come from smaller algorithms, better data curation, and improved human AI collaboration. Developers who understand these nuances will be more valuable than ever. So. This highlights the point. XAI right now is posting for developers to pay almost half a million dollars a year for good Android developers. And they're also trying to build out, a, you know, as Elon Musk said, a $10 million GPU data center. So we can see the disparage, right? So while others are chasing these metrics, smart companies are investing in engineering talent and practical applications. Now, if you need help getting some practical applications in your company to get your disconnected systems connected, reach out because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work like a well-oiled machine. Now, what do you guys think? My favorite thing is when you guys leave a comment down below. So make sure you comment and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to trade software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out to startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some information about our great services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Pack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.